Okay, so we have a lot of exciting stuff for you today because we worked on our prototype and we're um, very excited to share. Um, also, we obviously saw the um, usability test invites coming in and we have eight scheduled for the upcoming week, which is amazing. And thank you so much for um, getting that done so quickly. Um, so just looking at the agenda, um, I think we really just wanted to jump right in and start to show you the prototypes because I think the questions that I was asking before would come up through that and kind of make more sense with visualizing it. Um, yeah, and before that, we just wanted to say that we got some of initial feedback from our students in class and they were really excited about this, even though they had no idea what we were working on, they were um, really excited for us and um, had some great feedback that I think even though they didn't know what we were working on, it was still very helpful. Um, so nice. I'm going to start by sharing my screen and I'm gonna walk you through the first part of the prototype and then I'm gonna give it to Kalissa to um, go to the second piece. Okay, and hopefully I'm sharing the right thing. Okay. Yeah, I can see Figma. Great. So here's the normal page that you would see for the CICD editor. Um, a few differences to point out here on the top bar. I don't know if you can see my cursor or not. Yeah, I can. Okay, great. So we have this pipeline status bar that we wanted to include here to ver have a very straightforward understanding of what is the current state. And then it's still like the view pipeline button that was there from the previous um, website. Um, and then another change here, we just have like code editor is like a main title for what is going on down here. And this is just like the template file for the YAML. Um, and then, so we have this drop down, which I changed from the accordion style to drop down to make it more button like. And um, this was kind of my question here. So when I click on it, I have this drop down that I made to the full size instead of covering the editor, because I still wanted the users to be able to um, see all the content below. Oh, okay. um, yeah. So then they have like a search functionality. They can look at recent templates, which we have some options that are coming up and then suggested. And this would like be able to scroll down and see some more options here. Um, mm -hmm. And then just as an example, if I click on JavaScript YAML, it would come up here as like what that file is. So the user would be able to scroll and see it, which I didn't make functional at this time, but they would be able to scroll and see what the content of that file is and then commit those changes um, and update it. And it would just come in right away like that. Um, so any questions on this piece? Because we have another part of this that we wanted to share as well, but. I don't think I have questions yet I'll I'll keep them in mind if I do but you can keep going okay great so now just to like go back to so I have like an easy flow into what Calissa is going to share with you so we wanted to allow the user to have options for searching these templates because obviously the form that it has now, there's a lot of content to see, and this is really limited. So if the user doesn't want to use recent templates, they would able be able to search, to click on see all templates, and then this would pop the user onto this pop-up um, that, Kalissa, if you want to share your screen and go over this. Yeah, let me share. Okay, perfect. All right. Is this visible? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So because of that long list, right, we thought it would be helpful to have some filtering and more like search capability, especially if you're looking for something specific. So I'll just walk through some of the changes that we made. First is adding a search bar. So if you click on the search, you can, of course, like 
type whatever you want in, um, but also it'll have some of your recent searches. So if I click iOS, that's a recent one um, that I used. It'll update the list to show, these are just dummy, dummy files at the moment, but um, different iOS files maybe. And you can go back to the original list. Um, if you wanted to sort what was in here, Right now we have some suggested templates, but maybe maybe you're interested in looking at popular ones instead. So we also have a feature for sorting. And then um, some, some feedback that we got from the initial usability sessions was maybe filtering by different languages. So we also have a filter for that. Um, so like if you wanted to only see Python templates, for instance, you can click on that and then the list will filter. Um, let's see. Oh, right. And then when you want to select your template, let's say you want to use the first one in the list here, you can get a preview of the information um, of what the template is, and you can scroll through it. And once you're ready, you can either create new or import and replace, which was one of the questions that we had put in the agenda, um, maybe renaming these buttons, or if we could learn a little bit more about what these, what these mean, because for create new, for instance, you're not necessarily creating a new template, right? You're sort of you're cloning using... the template we thought. Yeah. Um, so if you have any any insight on that, we're still kind of figuring out if we want to keep these or maybe rename them. Yeah. I'm just wondering where did you get those button text name? Uh, where did you get those buttons from initially? Um, team. The these were the buttons that were there, right? Or did we come up with these names? I think the from the original like browse templates when it, they took you to like the new repository on the new tab, and then you click on one of the templates, one of the YAML files. They have like a couple more options on top of like the little oh. editor, and they were. I think they yeah. Okay, so that was because that those were like in um, we call it a I think it's just called a text editor, but it's those are actions that are available for any file that you're looking at. So you can like create new at any time, create a new file, or you can import and replace the file that you're looking at right now. I would say in this case, just replace, make the primary, like you like use this template, right? Because that, yeah. I feel like that's the main thing that you're looking for. And maybe in the future, like if somebody were to maintain all of the templates that are shown here, maybe then like create new would make sense. So you could add one so your team could use it. But I think like from what you're doing right now, you can just replace it with use this or something. Yeah. Use template or something like that. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. Thanks for explaining that. That makes a lot more sense now. Great. All right. I will stop my share. Um, any any questions on that flow or just any comments? I really like how you're previewing these files before, like in this case. Um, one question I had is what do the three dots do next to templates? Yes, um, so we don't have it prototyped right now, but there was some additional information on the current templates page um, that we thought rather than having them all listed at the top, they could be in like a drop down here or something since they're used less and things like that. And I um, guess that was also back to what you said before that the repository is really any file, not just templates. So we're not sure if those buttons are ever needed in this case. I think you could remove it. I think that would be okay. fine. One other thing I was thinking about is with, with modals, this is just something that I've I've learned over time. When you're displaying inform like usually we use modals to stop the user from doing something. It's like something they they must perform in order to get to the next task. So that's why like if you did some delete button, we would give you a confirmation modal to kind of like warn you before you complete it. Mm -hmm. In this case, because you're kind of like browsing through things, I'm wondering if you could use a drawer here instead of a modal. So it's a little like less invasive and you have more room so that the modal isn't like constantly changing height when you click on things. Um, just a suggestion and you don't have to take it, but it's a thought. 
no, yeah, we'll, we'll take that into account. Um, so are there, besides like delete messages or not, you know, like kind of confirmation messages, are there any other times that you use modal windows? Because we would want it to kind of fit, you know, like the pattern that you guys have. Um, we use them sometimes for, I guess, occasionally for forms, but we try not to. I think we've, we've been really moving against using modals and instead using drawers for, use drawers for any like supplemental information. And in this case, I would say that's what this is. Okay. And I just maybe... Can I show you all what the drawer is on the design system? Because I'm not sure if everyone yeah. would know on the top of their head. Um, so this is what it shows on the design system. It like comes from the side of the screen. Yeah. So it's, it's still overlaying like it is like a modal, but... Um... You can do other things on the screen versus with a modal. You can only interact with the modal. Yep. And there's a component for the drawer too. So you can still stretch it to make it larger. Like it doesn't have to be that set width. Yeah. I think that's definitely something we should explore if that's like um, aligning with your current design system. If modals are more like a stop, then we don't want to change um, like the understanding of how the user obviously is getting into the um, website currently. So that's definitely something we can look into. Um, and do you think that all, I guess this was another question with just like the way we're designing, if like adding the search bar is like actually possible within, you know, a drawer and all of these functionalities can be like combined. It can be. Yeah. Oh. Because what, um, what you're using to display those templates is you'll be using like a table type of format. And then the container that you put those on, the table in, could it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't impact the filters that you add to it. It's still, it's just like the background thing that you're placing it in. So it doesn't, um, you can mix it. It's, that's fine. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, one other question I had for you was, why did you just to get an understanding of like your your design process why did you go with the modal uh for that because i think today it like links out to a separate page right yeah i think that the way it's currently formatted it does seem like a stop in the user's flow and we wanted to make sure that it goes straight into using that template and not like getting lost in scrolling through of them and then i think you had to like copy and paste and put it back into the original. Um, so we kind of wanted to ease that process. Um, and I think that the pop-up is what we all originally thought. And then we kind of didn't, we kind of had the accordion style, like the first thing I showed you and the pop-up separate. And then we thought to combine those to kind of give more possibilities for the user would be a good idea. Yeah. No, I think that's great. I was asking you to, to understand like why you were going through it. And I think if you explain that, like in your presentation, that will help a lot because those are what you said is perfect <laughs> and saying in context of GitLab is also important, um, being able to like stay within the pipeline editor. So I think that's good. It was a good change. Great. And then, so again, just going back to like understanding the design system for I'm just going to share my screen again so I don't have to like talk about things like they don't exist. <laughs> so confusing that way. Um, so on this like drop down where it says see all templates, like the current drawer system would be another kind of button. Would I then replace see all templates with a button? for like to activate the drawer or can this be a button to activate the drawer? That can be a button itself. You don't have to okay. change anything. There. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, the other thing I would wonder there though, if you do bring up the templates in a drawer 
because it's, you're still going to be able to see your code editor because you'll like, instead of the modal, like overlaying on top of it, now you'll just have the drawer on the side. I'm wondering if you really need the preview action. You know how when you say see all templates now and then you click on a template like previews the, the code. I'm wondering if you need the preview now or if you could just like populate the code editor. I yeah. don't know, I might be overcomplicating it. Like preview it on like the left side panel. Yeah, like in the editor. I think that would make sense, especially because that's how we're doing it in this like smaller version of like it previews right there. So continuing with that yeah. as the drawer pops out. Yeah. Okay. We can definitely explore that. Yeah. Yeah. Explore it. I don't know if it's the right idea. It's just a thought again. Yeah. Thank you for, sh that's really helpful. Um, okay. And then Claudia also had another piece of a third part of the prototype where we are planning to combine these together, but we've been all like working separately and we're going to like obviously combine them later on, but we wanted to share all of the pieces with you. So Claudia, if you want to share what you were working on. Actually, even before we move on to that, I had one more question about the template stuff. Uh, do you want to share your screen? Because I don't know if I can find it. Like the, when we're talking about like the, the buttons like the important replace versus like create new. Thank you yes. so much. I think one of the also one of the other reasons why we assumed this was like um exclusive to like um templates is because we assumed or we thought that you can create new pipelines or that you can have more than one pipeline per project and they would be doing different things. So yeah. in the case of create new, you would be like creating a new pipeline based on the template. And in the case of like important replace, you would just like be changing your current pipeline. But um, we actually don't know how many, like, I mean, I assume it was like usually like only one pipeline per project because I don't, know, I, I don't see, because the pipelines seem different enough to me. But do you think there is ever a use case where you would want to like export a template into another file and make that a separate pipeline versus just um, changing the pipeline that you have right now? I think, um, I like the way you're thinking, but I think the, for each project, you can only have one pipeline YAML set. So you can never have two YAMLs in one project. But I do like the idea of exporting the pipeline uh, YAML like in this project and sharing it to another project because that could make work easier. But that seems to be out of scope. But if that's yeah, what sure. you want to suggest, that would also be fine. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally. We were that's thank you for confirming my suspicions that you can only have like one YAML file per project. So yeah. that also like our different like ideas of how the pipelines worked inform our decision of putting more than one button there. So that's good to know then. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Now now we can talk now we can talk about like the um a little bit of the work that it did for um changing some of the navigation flow. Um let me share my screen if I can find it. Here we go. Um, should be this one. Um, not as functional or not as like um complete as the um other prototypes you've seen before, but essentially the main idea was just to be able to um. In the pipeline section, where we used to have like only like we used to have like this tab where showed every single pipeline, and I decided that if I thought that it could be useful to instead have like the current pipeline and like as the first thing that you see um, to see the status, to see how many jobs you have, to see like um, the commit that it is, and to essentially see like the, um, the 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 status of the jobs to be able to like restart them and stuff like that, and then to be able to click on like all the previous pipelines that you had before. And I think um, because the previous way that you were able to access this page, like there's almost like a hub of a pipeline would be like um if you click on all and then you click on past and then yeah it, for some reason it would take you to like um this page which i think not only i but a couple of people thought that was like a little bit confusing too so that's like the main change that i did to showcase here yeah i think that makes sense um i'm wondering for the text if current or if or if most recent or something like that would make more sense yeah, that, I think so. Yeah, I think most recent, especially if you can only have like one pipeline per project. Um, yeah. They, yeah. Well, you can have multiple runs of that pipeline, yes. but it's all the same YAML the same. that it's processing. 
cool yeah, yeah. that case yeah that's completely right I'll change that to like most recent and stuff like that okay and, um, yeah I like that I actually think that the pipeline um editor team who's the ones responsible for like this section is exploring making this like the landing page with current pipeline status so mm -hmm. that's right in line <laughs> that's so cool I'm here, like, okay that, that's that's good then um because that was like kind of my idea like almost like a landing page um, the yeah. moment click on and people really loved this like visualized section um mm -hmm. and wanted it to be more centralized and i know claudia we were also curious about like making it more functional mm -hmm. yeah totally i have two questions about that the first question is, um, I didn't quite find like the component in like the pajamas library, the UI kit for this. Yeah, here. I don't think that there is. Let me do a quick search. Yeah, I was. I had to like take a screenshot of this and just put it here because I had like a hard time finding it. I that would be know. fine if you have to do that. Um, yeah. Let me just look real quick. I think, I think it might have been like a pipeline badge maybe oh i tried that too but i don't think it's that one because it looks um too small God, like that yeah i can show you if uh, i can go to the next one Ooh. yeah i tried here if i can show you like the little screenshot that i like i uh, had to put here these are the pipelines oh my goodness wait is that it pipeline navigation yeah these are pipeline badges and i don't think they're I don't think they're quite like what we're looking for. But you can change the background and add a border. Do you yeah. want me if you um if you highlight like one of those pipeline badges, mm -hmm. you can um if and then you change prototype to design. I'll show you how to do the border thingy. Yes. Can I actually, I'll be right back in one second. I just need to go turn up my own. Okay. Be... <laughs> yeah. But I think basically what we were curious about for that, um, also, obviously we, we don't want to go too far with our scope because we do want to like have everything that we produce, like fully tested and, um, yeah. like to the fullest extent that we can in like the short time we have left. But I think we were, oh, that was very quick, <laughs> wondering yeah, about like making that functional of like moving, you know, pieces to different sections, like from test to build and um, something like that. Right, Claudia? I think that was something that came up in like the- Oh, like moving jobs that way? Yes. As in being able to, for example, if this is like a test job, then maybe like either move it to like here. So it was like before the previous job or like being able to switch the jobs around from stages. Yeah. That is a cool idea. Um, to me though, that's like, I, I do wonder if it's increasing your scope because that's more like editing or create it's it is kind of like creating a pipeline but visualizing it in that instead of using yaml yeah yes. i think there was one person that was in the usability test that was a little less experienced and for yeah. them this was super like easy to understand and we yeah. had even further thoughts of like what if this popped out to like a just that section to format it and edit just that piece of the test job. Um, but I do think that is like beyond our scope, but like a super cool idea because this is a page that people really loved. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I think it's outside of your scope. I don't think you're going to have time to be able to fully flush that out, but I think you should share it with us because okay. um, we could definitely do that. And would you see, so that seems like for people who are less experienced with building pipelines, they would want to see this visualization when they're building it in the first part. Yeah, we, that's the, even from the other person who is also like some sort of experience with like um, CICD stuff, he was a software engineer. He suggested that um, instead of like starting from like the, from like the um, editor, like YAML file to be able to code it directly, um, you could just move the stuff around that is already on the template and then, yeah. 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 That makes sense. I would share that. Cool. Okay. We'll make a note for that. 
for later. Um, did you have any other questions on this specifically? Because I just want to make sure we get to everything else. Um, no, and also Claudia, if you want to use screenshots here, that's fine. I was saying you could change the background color for those if you scroll down on the right side mm -hmm. in your panel. Yeah. See how it has like the selection colors? You can change those and yes. it won't it won't like make the component different, but it's like screenshots are fine. You don't have to do it. <laughs> yeah. The only reason what was missing was like the icon on like the right. That's why it wasn't like exactly the same. Okay. Yeah, you can't add that either. Yep. All right. Never mind. Ignore yeah, me. But, yeah, but that's, I think the screenshots are fine for now, for sure. Yep. Definitely. Um, okay. So quick question is, we just wanted to make sure what we were using the right frame size that um, you would typically oh. use. Yeah. What is it? Uh, right now, I think... Um, we were thinking about either 920 times 1080, but I think what we're working with was um, this size, 1440 times 1024. That's what I usually work with, yeah. Okay, okay. cool. So we can stick with this one. Okay. Perfect. Cool. Um, and then we also linked the usability testing script and our plan on the agenda, which, yeah, thank you, Claudia, for pulling that up. Mm -hmm. um, and we wanted to add... Um, the SUS to the method as part of the way we're measuring um, the user's feedback, which you had shared with us previously, um, because I think that would be a really great way to measure um, their feedback and really get like numbers associated with it to back up what we're finding. Um, and we were wondering, is there already like a survey form that is created that we can use or should we just like copy those questions um into a survey um where did you find the questions at first is it in the handbook page or something I yeah understand. right there like those 10 questions I see um I would use those I don't think we have like a Google form set up with okay. those already. So yeah, I would, and all of those questions use that same scale. So I think you would just have to make it. Yeah, I think that's easy enough. We have like Tufts Qualtrics access. So I think that will be like perfect. Um, I think one other thing you could do is in the sessions, you could just ask these and then ask them to rate it from one to five instead yeah. of setting it out separately. It's, yeah, if you have time. You yeah, I guess I wasn't, the the thoughts what we're having, because we haven't really been able to do a full pilot session on the current prototype, because we have so many um, tests for next week, we were thinking the two sessions on Monday are going to be kind of a pilot, um, but we're going to try to do it to the best of our ability and just see if there's any changes to be made before we have a bunch more tests on Wednesday. Um, so I guess we have to like figure out the timing during those sessions and we may not have time to get to these questions. So I was thinking we might send it out after if that's necessary, just as a survey. Yeah. Uh, when you did your first round of usability tests, did you have them rate stuff on a scale? No. Yeah. No, but I we, only, we came up with like questions on the spot to us, but we didn't have like a formal scale or anything. Yeah. Okay. I think I was our professor say, really wanted us to have like a an actual scale for this time. That's fine. Okay. Okay. In the future, you could because there's so many questions in this. You could just have them like in the first round, ask ease of use scale, like scale up from one to five, and then compare that to the second round, and then you could use those comparisons. But because you haven't done that, you could just use this. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, great. we we can do that for sure, and we can also compare like the notes that we have from the previous one, even if it wasn't like a scale. So, okay, perfect. Um, so it is three o'clock, so I don't want to keep anyone longer. And luckily, I think we were able to get through everything, unless anyone has any other questions quickly. 
think I added one more question to the agenda, which is like, how do we get access to the icons and the font? Because when I try to get the icons, it led to a um, repository, and I'm not really sure because I've been just downloading them, detaching the instance on the design system, and replacing it. But it's that's uh, it hasn't been working super is well. Is the the stuff the text I added into the Google Doc does that work? That worked for me. I was able to add the icons as a new library and then um, make it like go through the same process we did for the original component library. So now it'll pop up under assets for me. Yeah, me too. Oh, okay. I haven't actually checked this out. So yeah, I'll, I'll definitely do that. Perfect. Okay. And same with the fonts. You'll just add them to your font book if you're using Mac. Yeah. And I think that worked for me. And then I had to like re open Figma, like fully close it and get out of it and then reopen and it was working fine. That makes sense. Yeah. Should. Okay. Perfect. Let me know if you have problems. So. Alex. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, yeah. So we'll definitely share with you like the prototype on Slack once we have everything like integrated just for you to see. Um, like probably on Sunday, we're going to have another meeting, I think. I don't Sunday or Monday before our usability test, we'll have like the full interactive prototype um, and we'll keep you updated on how those tests are going. Okay, that sounds good. Great job, by the way. I really like the changes that you're proposing and I know our team is really excited to see it. So, yeah. Awesome, thank you so much for your help. Yeah. No problem. All right. Have a great weekend. You too. You too. Thank you so much. Bye. All right. Talk to you later.